So here's the problem of something rotating and you want to find out the final angular velocity after something falls on it or jumps on it. So here we have a kid. He's running. It's one of those um, things in the park that goes round and round that you can spin on. So he's running and he jumps on it. And we want to figure out how fast it's going once he jumps on it. So when we look at this, we have to look at this as angular momentum. So what we know is that our angular momentum initial must be equal to our angular momentum final. And that's easy to see the angular momentum of the disk. And we'll, since it's a disk, we'll say our I initial is equal to mR squared over 2. So we can say our mR squared over 2 times our omega. But now what about the person? What you have to remember about linear velocity with relative to angular velocity is that your angular velocity is equal to your momentum cross product r. And since yeah, they're, they're not, they're running here, but we only care about that instant right when they're about to jump on. And so their r is going to be the radius of the circle. So we can say the mass of the person times velocity initial times r is equal to their initial angular momentum. So we're going to add this to our total angular momentum initial. But what you have to be careful about is the plus sign. In this case, I am spinning counterclockwise, so I have a positive um, angular momentum. If I were going clockwise, then my angular momentum would be zero, I mean, sorry, negative, and my sign over here would then be negative. Sorry, over here would be negative. But for this one, we're looking at a positive, and we're going to see what happens. So as we're spinning, the person runs and they jump on this, and now they're standing here on the edge. And so we have to look at our final angular momentum. Our final angular momentum is going to be equal to our new i times our new omega. So we have to find our new i. Our new i is going to be the disk plus the person on it. So we're going to say this our I final is going to be equal to our I initial, which was MR squared over 2, plus the mass of the person times the distance of the person to the pivot point, which we're assuming to the middle here. So that's that radius squared. So that's your new I. So you're going to put that in for this right here. So to find your omega final, did something. To find your omega final, you're going to say your mr squared over omega, and I probably should clarify that this m is different than that m. Let me make this a capital M. It's in different colors, but just to make sure we see the difference, because that's the mass of the disk as opposed to the mass of, mass of the person. And so now I can say my omega final is equal to my mr squared omega plus my mv initial r all divided by my new i which will be mr squared over 2 plus mv squared. Again, this is the mass of the person and this is the mass of the disk. So I hope that makes more sense. The only difference that I, I was saying is if you were spinning to the right, or I should say if you're spinning uh, clockwise, then you would have a negative mr squared over here, to, over 2 times omega. Sorry, my voice is starting to go out. But uh, I hope that makes sense. Let me know if you have any questions.